What's going on my friends of Clash of Clans? We're back on our Rush Base series account today and you know how I said yesterday that I was going to more than likely make mistakes throughout this process? Already started out with a mistake from the beginning. Now, first things first, we did get a new base, a new defensive layout. It might be a base that I've stolen from one of my Town Hall 15s and obviously it's not going to defend anything like that. But we do have high defenses like that Town Hall's uh, weapon as well as the uh, monolith that might scare newer players that come onto this base but there's also players down here that have sneaky goblins and super archers apparently so yeah I, I didn't even know I had no idea there was players down this far that had sneaky goblins but it's smart it's smart which kind of leads us into our topic for today which would be five tips to increase resource collection because even as a rush based player I need resources and regardless of whatever town hall level you're playing you're gonna need resources because that is the driving force in clash of clans resources in order to upgrade your buildings on your village you're gonna need resources and in order to increase the power power of your offensive capability, troops, spells, siege machines, and the heroes, you're gonna need a lot of resources for the next few years that you decide to invest in Clash of Clans, no matter what level you're playing, right? So I made this mistake and I wanna point it out from the start. We had the Elixir storages, Dark Elixir storage, and Gold storages as our first upgrade option in our priority list, like the buildings that I was gonna focus on from the beginning. Well, I started upgrading the the elixir storages and I got about halfway through the day yesterday and I was like wow dude you are breaking the number one rule in clash of clans keep your builders upgrading and keep the laboratory researching which I was not doing my laboratory was idle all day yesterday good job Joe so that's where I needed to make a shift on my building upgrade priority list moving the laboratory into the number one spot rule of thumb when it comes to upgrading in Clash of Clans, no matter what town hall level you're playing, the very first building that you upgrade is the laboratory because you need to increase your troop strength in order to succeed at whatever town hall level you're playing. So in this case, we have what? A level four laboratory that's going to level five and we have a long way to go before we have it maxed out. So that's gonna take a bit of time to do, which means that I'm going to need a lot more resources. So we need to prioritize the collection of those resources. So tip number one, upgrade your gold mines, elixir pumps, and dark elixir drills. Now, players out there that grind Clash of Clans, like they're on the game every single day, will sit there and say, you don't need to do this. You don't need to upgrade them. They're not worth upgrading, but that's because they play every single day and they're stealing large sums of resources out in multiplayer battles. But at some point throughout the day, whether it's at night or in the morning, you need to sleep, right? So if those buildings are at higher levels, when you log back in the next day or a day later after that, you will gain a large amount of passive loot. Why would you not want free loot, right? I mean, everybody wants free loot because it's easy. So we wanna upgrade those for that one reason first, the passive income that you get when you come back into the game. But the other reason that I recommend upgrading these buildings is for the loot economy in Clash of Clans. And what that means is that if you decide to take a break from the game and you leave your base idle for an extended period of time there's going to be a massive amount of resources on your base so when players go out in multiplayer battles to steal resources find your base steal your resources it keeps them upgrading buildings and active i know not everybody out there wants to help other players succeed but in the end game it does keep the loot flowing in clash of clans whether you're online or you're offline so i highly recommend that you upgrade those within the first couple of weeks of playing whatever count that you're playing now tip number two takes us into my original thought process when it comes to increasing the level of the storages we have to take into consideration whether you're a free to play player or you are a gold pass buyer, you will claim magic items at some point in the form of runes. These guys right here, we have a gold rune, an elixir rune, and a dark elixir rune. When you use a rune, it will fill up the capacity of that resource to the maximum amount that you have available. So an example would be right now, I have a max capacity of 21 million gold on my gold storages. So we have 7 million sitting right there. So we already have that gap filled of 7 million gold. If I 
use a rune of gold. It's only going to go from 7 million up to 21 million, and that is not the maximum amount that I can get for a Town Hall 16. So that means that I would want to increase the level of my storages. That way, when I use a rune, it's ideal to use it with empty storages, and you get a large amount of resources for free. So obviously, number two would be to upgrade storages. That way, when you use runes, you get the most out of them that you possibly can. Good. All right. Tip number three would be the increasing or strengthening of a strong farming army. Now that's what constituted the shifting of my buildings is that I had the elixir storages, gold storage, and the dark elixir storage. I moved them over and I moved the laboratory in its place. Next to it, you're going to see a barracks. So we needed to start upgrading the barracks because we need to unlock troops. So all I had yesterday was barbarian and archer unlocked. And by upgrading the barracks, I was able to unlock the giant, the goblin and the wall breaker. Now there are many farming armies in the game that a lot of players choose to use like barbarians and archers. It's probably the most basic farming army in the game that you can just go out in multiplayer battles and find those dead bases and steal gold elixir and dark elixir from the resource mines and pumps on the outside of the base. It's very generic and it works very nice for the start, but there are better armies out there. Now, one of the perks of being a rush base player is that technically I'm a Town Hall 16, which means that I am beyond Town Hall 11, which also means that I have unlocked the sauna. So we can boost super troops as a rush base player. It's one of the perks, but you'll notice that everything here is grayed out because I can't boost these super troops until I upgrade the troops themselves. So we need a level seven goblin to unlock the sneaky goblin. The sneaky goblin army, if you've been playing for a while, you might've been browsing some YouTube content, you've probably seen sneaky goblin so much that is more than likely overpowering every other farming army in the game because it is the best and the easiest army to use to steal resources both on the outsides as well as loot inside the base. And you can take down the town hall and trophy push if you want to. So that's what I'm targeting. I'm targeting the sneaky goblin with the super wall breaker army. It's my favorite army to use to farm, which means that I need to increase the level of my laboratory. That way I can continue to research and get a higher lot level goblin. So right now at level four laboratory, we are stuck we cannot increase the level of our goblin until we upgrade the laboratory itself. So this is gonna be a process for the next day or so is focusing on upgrading the laboratory. That way I can increase the level of the goblin, which can contribute to a new army in the sneaky goblins. Which leads us into tip number four, which would be find a trophy range that supports high loot output. Now what that means exactly is right now, this account sits in Silver League and Silver League, so far I've been kind of browsing through the bases and I haven't really found anything that I would consider as high sums of resources, like 800,000 golden elixir and higher. And uh, sometimes you might find those and sometimes you might not. Now, something to take into consideration is that when you're offline for an extended period of time, what actually happens is the base might be in Crystal League when you log out for the last time. And then as players attack your village, steal your resources, clear your town hall, you're losing trophies. So your base is basically moving down into the lower leagues. Now, I don't know what's down in Bronze League. There might might be good resources down there, there might not. As we go up through silver, I know that there might be some resources and it also depends on what town hall level you're playing as well. Because like a couple of examples of this was like when I was playing through my free to play series over the years, a town hall nine and a town hall 10 might do very well in gold league to find dead bases of resources. And then as you move up into town hall 11, town hall 12, crystal league might be a really good place. And the same thing applies as you move up into Masters League. So on higher level bases like Town Hall 13, 14, 15, I've personally found my best dead loot, not bases that are alive and trophy pushing, but I'm talking about the bases that have been abandoned that have a ton of resources available. I normally find those in Masters League or down in Crystal League. The point that I'm trying to make is that the tip that you need to follow is that if you're not finding resources, don't be afraid to either lose trophies or gain trophies to try to find 
find that range where you're going to consistently find bases with dead loot. And that is the facts when it comes to Clash. As I do attempt to farm, if I'm not finding resources in a range, in a trophy range that I'm, I think might have resources, I might drop down a little bit. Or I might trophy push just a little bit trying to collect wins to move up in trophy ranges because you will occasionally find better loot up in Champions League. Sometimes you'll find some dead bases, but you also have the perk of that loot bonus as you get up into Champion and Titans League as well. Now, Titans League normally doesn't have a ton of resources when it comes to dead bases because that's where your most active players are hanging out. Titans, up in Legends League, etc. So my point here is to find a range that works for you depending on the Town Hall level that you're playing. And like I said earlier, Town Hall 10s, normally Gold League works out really nice. Sometimes Crystal League for Town Hall 11, and a lot of times for your higher level bases, Masters League tends to produce mass sums of resources. Now, my last tip in regard to loot collection is obviously going to revolve around the practice maps as well as the single player maps. As you go through these, you're going to see that there's a ton of free resources. And I know a lot of you guys, when you're first starting out Clash of Clans, you've probably completed a lot of these because they are free loot. And sometimes I've been very tempted to just go in here and grab some loot from these as well. The same thing applies as you go up into higher ranges of the goblin maps, you're going to see larger sums of of resources available. Let's scroll all the way to the end. The last one has 2.5 million gold and elixir with 25,000 dark elixir. That looks amazing for a lower level player. The point that I'm trying to make when it comes to these is try to avoid doing these for just the loot. Because if you decide to trophy push in Clash of Clans, as you get up into Champions and, and Titans League, you're gonna find less and less resources while you move up into those ranges. So if you do have a builder that comes back or a laboratory that's idle, you might need resources to get those down as soon as possible. And that's where you can go into your practice loot or your goblin maps and steal the loot from those. But that's just a recommendation in regard to this loot i understand it's easily sitting there for anybody to claim and it's probably one of the first places you target before going out into multiplayer battles and having to grind the loot like everybody else and of course i don't want to discount there are other options available for collection of resources one of those viable options would obviously be participating in clan wars when you take down a base you do get some type of resource compensation for it and then it gets paid out into the treasury at the end of the war Unfortunately, I'm playing this rush base and I doubt I'll be allowed in anybody's clan war anytime soon because yeah, I'm just basically giving up a win for somebody else. Also make sure that you're paying attention to the uh, events tab because sometimes there will be the option for two times, four times star bonus where you can do attacks and multiplayer battles and claim multiplied resources in the treasury. And then last but not least, let's not forget about the raid medals. If you are lucky enough to be in a clan that gets to participate in clan capital, you can use raid medals once a week to claim gold elixir or dark elixir. So these are just other options to claim resources in conjunction to the tips that I provided you today. But let us know down in the comments below where you find the best resources or what's the best method in your opinion to get those resources.